When I was a kid, I was obsessed with the movie Blue Crush, but as I got older, I realized being a klutz kind of crushed my dreams of being a surfer. But hey, at least the science of surfing is totally rad, brah. Hey dudes, Julia here for D News. While athletes aren't typically seen as nerdy types, there's a lot of science that goes into sports, from using biology to optimize their performance, or using physics to create the perfect spin on a soccer ball. And surfing is no exception. There's a lot more to surfing than first meets the science-inclined eye. There's a lot of physics at play when surfers hit the waves. Things like buoyancy, surface tension, mass, shape, and hydrodynamic forces all act together to make the perfect ride. While mass and shape tend to deal more with the surfer, buoyancy and hydrodynamic forces depend on the surfboard. And we've come a long way since the early days. Once upon a time, surfboards weren't that good at being surfboards. Before the 1920s, they were heavy, like at least 100 pounds and up to 16 feet long. They were made of local wood, like redwood, but unfortunately, the wood wasn't very water resistant. So as a person surfed, the boards would soak up water and get heavier and more difficult to control. Then in 1926, a guy from Wisconsin named Tom Blake decided to drill holes into his redwood surfboard, then cover it with thick pieces of wood. It became a huge hit. It was the first mass-produced surfboard, but it was still big and heavy. A few years later, in 1932, balsa wood boards hit the scene, reducing the weight from 100 pounds to just 30. And a few years after that, fixed tail fins were added, making them stable and easier to steer. And boards pretty much stayed the same after that for a few decades, but recently, huge leaps and bounds have been made in technology. Foam and fiberglass made surfboards lighter and stronger. And even new designs make boards more and more hydrodynamic. Similar to aerodynamics, hydrodynamics deal with the way water moves around an object, so most of the magic happens under the water. The shape of the underside of the board and the shape of the fin changes the way water is directed and changes the way the surfer controls the board. Like to get a smooth ride, some surfboards have two depressions on the bottom that look like a wide M, appropriately called double concave. A V-bottom has a V-shape in the middle of the board which turns easily and is good for large surf. And fins, of course, are kind of like the spoilers on the back of cars. They've got to have the right balance between lift and drag. But it's all up to the surfer and what kind of waves they want to ride. And believe it or not, there's a lot surfboard makers can learn from rocket science. Seriously. Former SpaceX engineer Edison Connor co-founded a company called Burial Surf Technology to create a board using the same materials used to make rockets. Kevin's at Burial even created a new kind of foam. Their foam crystallizes, forming thick, tightly packed cells. This means more cells can be packed into the same area, making for a lighter, more durable, and more buoyant board. So who knows where surf technology will take us next, but it's exciting to see how far it's come in such a short amount of time. But you know what? Surfing's not the only sport that gets better with a firm understanding of science. Check out this video from Julian, who talks about the physics of baseball pitches. There's a lot more to a pitch than just rocketing the ball over the plate. By changing the grip, pressure, and release of the ball, the pitcher can alter its flight path and make the batter's life miserable. So, are you a surfer? Tell us how you hang 10 down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here. DNews has new episodes every day of the week.